Happy Sabbath, everyone. Hope that you're doing well. Um, we're a little disappointed that we're not all worshiping here together. This is our normally our Thanksgiving worship service, the Sabbath just before Thanksgiving. But because of COVID, we are actually not able to do that. But we still have so much to be thankful for. We've got this beautiful cornucopia that reminds us of abundance. And there are so many blessings that we have to celebrate. And so I'm just I'm thankful that you are able to tune in uh, today to view this service. And I just pray that it connects you with heaven and blesses your heart and your home. Right now, I want to share just a few brief announcements with you. First of all, California Department of Public Health and Fresno County Department of Public Health and Central California Conference currently are not allowing indoor worship services. That's what we're dealing with. So here's our tier levels, uh, widespread being the one we've tr been trying to avoid. And as you see here on the screen, we went uh, two weeks ago on November 4 from 6 0.1 per 100,000 in our county, up to 8.3. We were fine if we could bounce back the next week. Like, we've done that a couple of times in the past. But here we went from 8.3 up to 14.6. So it was a big jump. So thus, we are not able to meet together. And, and the fact that we're at 14.6, it does seem like it's going to be a little bit of time before we get back down to normal. I think it's good news that those vaccines are on their way because I think we're going to need them. Um, just a quick update on some other stats, just to let you know kind of what's going on in our county. Currently, there's 151 people hospitalized for COVID in Fresno County, and that's up from 31 from last week. So that's also a, a pretty good jump. Um, I also noticed that deaths increased yesterday by three. Uh, that, that has been pretty... Uh, we've been pretty stable in, in that statistic, which is, of course, the most crucial one, and I'm thankful that we haven't been having a big jump in that. New cases yesterday, though, were 296, so that's, that's, um, that's a big jump. It's a, it's, that's over 124 more than we had on one day in last week, on Friday. Another piece of good news is that 98.6 of all cases of people with COVID-19 have survived, so we're thankful for that. Let's uh, continue to be praying um, during this, this time as, as the fall season is coming. Let's be on our knees. Let's be c connecting with each other on the phone, through Zoom. Let's be praying together, praying with our families, really seeking God. Because this is a time when it starts to get darker, we can start to deal with uh, discouragement and depression. Those kind of things happen. And this is a time for us to press so close to our Lord. And one of the ways you can do that is by joining us at our prayer meeting on Wednesday nights at 630 and uh, the information for, for that is in the e-newsletter that Sunnyside puts out. Um, you can also send a text to me at 805-441-1263, 805-441-1263. Send me a text if you would like the link for our prayer meeting on Wednesday night at 630. Uh, also, save the date. We are going to be having Blue Christmas, but we're going to do an online edition this year. Uh, unless there's some dramatic turnaround in the next week, which we're not anticipating, we will be having it online. That'll be Wednesday night, December 16. We have some special things planned for it that I think can make it even more intimate and special. Um, but this is a, a time when we have traditionally gathered uh, on a Wednesday evening to grieve together and to find hope and, and courage. Uh, it, sometimes Christmas for many people is not the, the happiest time of the year or the most wonderful time of the year. A lot of, for a lot of people, it's a very sad time. And so we want to connect, and we want to connect with those that need to be connected with. So it's a time for us to press together, and we're going to be doing some special things that we'll tell you more about uh, in, few, in the next few weeks. Uh, encourage faithful giving. Um, there's different ways you can pause the screen right now and see multiple ways that you're able to give online. Uh, also, mailing, check to the church, uh, dropping it off at the church, or, well, right now it's going to be tough to drop it off in the offering box on Sabbath morning. But anyway, we want to encourage faithful giving um, as we are getting ready to, to come into the last quarter. We need to finish strong this year. I'm super excited that my wife is going to be preaching today. Vicki has a message. I asked her uh, some time ago if she would be willing to preach because uh, she and her growth group are currently going through a book called 1,000 Gifts. 
And um, so they've been talking all about gratitude all the time, about how thankful they are about this and how thankful they are about that. And so I thought I'd give her a chance to put her money where her mouth is and to talk and tell us and teach us a little something about gratitude. And uh, so her title, the sermon title is Grace, Gratitude, and Glory. And she's given me a little sneak preview of some of the things that I'm super excited. I think it's going to be very valuable and a blessing. So I hope that you'll open your hearts and minds to receive something that could really make a big difference in your life. Right now, we are going to uh, continue our service. We're going to invite our worship team, Yvette, Bob, and Arlen, to come forward, and we're going to sing together this beautiful song, Cornerstone.
Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you guys are watching this. It's good to be back up here. Thanks for inviting me, Jerry. <laughs> Today I'm going to be reading scripture and doing prayer for us before Vicki comes up to share a message. Um, our scripture is 2 Corinthians 4, 15 through 18. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow, overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an, an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not, want, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Wherever you are, please bow your heads with me as we have prayer. Lord, thank you for getting us through this week, for getting us through this year so far. Thank you for waking us up this morning so that we have another day, another opportunity to get to know you more and get to love you and praise you and talk to you. Thank you for our family and our friends and our church family that we have to turn to. Thank you for your unfailing and unwavering love and kindness and understanding and faithfulness to us when we're not always as faithful to you. Thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, I ask that you be with each and every one of us. You be with us here that are at the church working to keep us moving forward and looking to you, that you're there with everybody at home who's watching or listening on their TV or computer or phone or iPad. Be with us, Lord. We have all these things in the world that are big challenges for us or things within ourselves. Maybe we're stressed out and it feels like it's more than we can bear. Maybe we're anxious. We struggle with depression or OCD. Lord, help us to turn to you. Remind us that you're bigger than any challenge or anything in this world, and that you're bigger than anything within ourselves. Thank you for being bigger than anything here, and thank you for always being there for us. I pray that you be with Vicki as she shares her message today. I pray that you fill her with your Holy Spirit and your words, that she can deliver your message to us and that we are ready to receive your words. Please ready our hearts and our minds for your message today. We pray all this in your name, amen. I want to echo Asia's good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> we are actually here on a Wednesday night because tomorrow is kind of an important day in my family. <laughs> Our daughter Kristen and her husband Adam are having their second child tomorrow. How do I know this? <laughs> They're actually scheduled uh, for a delivery tomorrow and so um, we had to record early, so thank you for being here with us. Um, this message about grace and gratitude and glory are 
are really um, dear and near to my heart. And I pray that as we study together, as we share together, that um, you will discover what's so amazing about grace. Several years ago, I received a gift, and it changed my life forever. I was part of a church and school community somewhere else, <laughs> over on the coast, actually. And there was a family who was a very important part of that community. And for some reason, I was pretty intimidated by the lady of the family. And I kind of had convinced myself that she didn't like me. And our interactions were kind of awkward and uncomfortable. And um, I think we kind of tended to avoid each other. Um, but one day, she um, sort of reprimanded my daughter in a way that I didn't like. And so I really defended my daughter kind of vigorously. And then the lady and I avoided each other for a while. Well, thankfully, God already had a plan to heal and transform and create something really beautiful. He got my attention one morning when I was praying and spending time with me. He, um, in, he put on my heart to start praying for this person. And so I did. And um, I prayed that I would see her through God's eyes. And I prayed that he would forgive me for my attitude about her. And um, I prayed for my heart to be changed. And I started thanking God for her in a big way. And I started seeing her through a new lens, through a new, in a new frame. And um, she actually contacted me not long after that. And we got together, and we talked, and we talked, and we talked. And we um, apologized, and we asked for forgiveness. And then we started meeting for coffee or whatever, tea, decaffeinated tea. <laughs> and um, we quickly found in each other a precious, safe, open, vulnerable, very deep friendship. And today, this person who would not mind at all that I'm sharing this story because we've talked about it many times, Jamie, is one of my very, very closest friends. She loves me, and I love her very deeply. She would do anything for me, and um, I feel so safe with her. And all of this is a gift from God, a gift of grace, actually, that transformed us. His gift of grace transformed us and gave us something beautiful. So let's talk about grace for a few minutes. Um, the Old Testament Hebrew word for grace is pronounced hain, C-H-E-N, but it's pronounced hain, and it means favor. And so that makes the definition that we've all heard many times, unmerited favor of God toward man, unearned, unfair, undeserved favor, it makes sense. We've heard of Noah having favor in God's sight, and Moses, and Samuel, and many others in the Old Testament. And so I understood from this that God's grace saves us. I understood that about grace. I knew that no amount of law keeping could save us and that salvation was absolutely a gift and that I didn't deserve it. So all of that was beyond comprehension and amazing. Sorry, not amazing, astounding. I didn't want to use amazing yet. <laughs> but I still didn't know even with knowing about salvation, I didn't know still what was so amazing about grace. So I began to pray and study about it. I read a book, 1,000 Gifts, that Jerry already mentioned by Ann Voskamp that we are um, reading in our growth group. And in this book, which is an amazing book, by the way, the lady shares her story of transformation that comes by giving thanks in response to grace. And I read Lucado's In the Grip of Grace and his Grace More Than We Deserve, Greater Than We Imagine. I read Stuart Tyner's Searching for the God of Grace. 
I read Yancey's What's So Amazing About Grace. I read from Benner's Opening to God. And from all that, I began to ask these questions that Lucado puts very clearly. He says, have you been changed by grace, shaped by grace, strengthened by grace, emboldened by grace, softened by grace, snatched by the nape of your neck and shaken to your senses by grace? If you haven't, then hang on and join me in a discovery of this most precious gift. Benner also wrote, because all true prayer involves opening ourself to God, all prayer is capable of being the means of grace by which God does his work of transformation in us. So given that, let's go ahead and pray right now and ask God to transform us. Father, I just pray that you would be with us just now, that each person who is hearing or seeing this presentation would be willing to open their heart and their mind to you, that they would invite you deep into their souls, that you would inhabit us, that your grace would flood us, and that we would allow you to transform us. May we understand the message that you have for us tonight. Father, I just pray that you would speak through me and that my weakness would be made perfect in your power. In Jesus' name, amen. So as I was studying about grace, when I began using a tool that I actually um, read about in Ann Voskamp's book, and that is called blueletterbible.org. This is a fantastic free um, online site that has um, the whole Bible, and it has it in multiple versions. And then it also has a Greek and a Hebrew lexicon so that you can look up any individual word in all of scripture and learn so much about it. And as I started studying with this tool, I started discovering that sometimes the translation choosing a single English word for a rich Hebrew concept is very difficult. And so as I use the, the tool, I realized that the words that are in scripture often have just vast, deeper meanings. And so it was very, very cool. And it was very true about grace. So grace in the New Testament, in the uh, Greek, is haris. And it's hard for me to say that. You kind of roll it in the back of your throat. C-H-A-R-I-S, haris. And it turns out that grace in uh, this setting has three main elements. The first one is probably pretty familiar to all of us. If you think of a person who is graceful, not just physically graceful, but in their heart and spirit, they bring joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, loveliness, grace of speech. That's all part of grace. The second part of grace is goodwill, loving kindness. And what this is talking about actually is the loving, merciful kindness of God who exerts his influence on us, turns us to Christ, keeps us, strengthens us, increases us in faith, in knowledge and affection, and then kindles or starts a fire in us so that we will be transformed. Isn't that amazing? That, it, that it's so rich and so much more than just a single word, grace. It is the power that God uses in our lives when we invite him to transform us. It is what he does to change us, to strengthen us, to increase our faith, and to create us in his image. The third part of Haris is what is due to grace. In other words, what does grace, besides transforming us, what does it produce? And it actually produces thankfulness. So it's not only that we are thankful because we're being transformed and our lives are improved. The actual concept of grace, the actual power of grace, 
creates gratitude. And so as we allow grace to work in us, we feel thankful, we feel grateful, and the natural outpouring of that is to practice giving thanks, and, and the Hebrew word for that is eucharisteo, eucharisteo, like the Eucharist, that comes from grace and practicing gratitude. So three parts, the loveliness of grace, God's power that transforms us, and then gratitude that comes from grace and overflows. And we know from Romans that this happens even while we are still sinner, sinners, Romans 5, 8 to 10. God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And we know that this grace saves us, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. It's by grace that you have been saved. Let me just read from our scripture from today, 2 Corinthians 4, 15 again. I just want to read the first part, the first verse. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. So it says right there in the passage what happens with grace. It spreads to one another when we practice allowing God's grace to transform us, when we're in that environment and in that mindset and in that way of living, it reaches more and more people. And it causes thanksgiving to overflow, and then it glorifies God. Ellen White says it this way, from Acts of the Apostles, page 12. Enfeebled and defective as it may appear, the church is the one object upon which God bestows his supreme regard, enfeebled and defective as it may appear. It is the theater of his grace. Think of a huge, majestic theater. It is the theater of his grace in which he delights to reveal his power to transform hearts. Grace transforms. So I don't know about you, but one of my habits that's not a very healthy one is that I often want to solve issues for other people, solve problems. And if I don't, I kind of go to worst case scenario sometimes. I can even create a movie in my head. <laughs> um, so I had a situation like this that's been going on with someone that I love. and. Um, it was stressing me so much that I was actually waking up in the middle of the night. And I would wake up, and of course I'm going to pray when I wake up. So I would pray and pray and pray. I would pray about the problem, and I would pray about the solution. And um, one day I was in the middle, actually in the daylight hours, <laughs> I was in the middle of praying about the problem, and God got my attention, reminded me of a text that's in Philippians 4, which probably is very familiar to you, Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all our understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So I immediately began thanking God, not for the problem, not for the solution, but for the character in this person that was at the core of the struggles. This person was, was very convicted of something and very passionate about it and deeply emotional about it. And so I began thanking God for that peace because I believe that God actually placed this on his heart. And so I began thanking God for that peace, for the integrity, for the conviction of this person that was actually contributing to his circumstances, not in a bad way, but it was. So as I began thanking God for those character traits and those convictions and that integrity, I immediately had this flood of overwhelming peace. It was like, 
oh my goodness, I'm sorry, God, I didn't let you get my attention before this. I spun and spun and spun for several days and weeks and I don't know how long. And so now the, the situation is not resolved, but I am not confused into thinking that I need to resolve it. <laughs> Instead, I remember God reminded me that my job is to give thanks, to pray and give thanks. And that's what I'm doing. And the thing is, if I tried to keep this person from pain and stress and sadness, it's very possible that I would rob him of gifts that God has planned for him, gifts of absolute trust, assurance that God was in control, peace from God. So let's bring it all together. How does this grace work? And really, I, I believe there's just four simple steps. The first is to receive this gift that God has already offered us, that God already prepared in advance for us. To just receive it, tell God, yes, I accept your free gift of grace. I repent and receive your salvation that you already gave. <laughs> Step two is responding by opening up yourself, giving your will, your heart, your mind to God through prayer and to seek transformation, to ask him for transformation. One scripture that has been so helpful to me is Romans 12, one and two. Therefore, I urge you brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So respond to God, offer yourself to him as a living sacrifice, invite him to transform you. 1 Peter 5.10 says, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. It's God that's going to transform you. And that is so encouraging to me. The third step, then, is to give thanks intentionally. So remember that grace is going to create thankfulness in you. And so be intentional about noticing it. Practice journaling set a timer, get a, a grace partner or a thanksgiving partner. Ask God to remind you. Ask him to remind you every day. And incidentally, grace is shown to have many positive effects in current research. Physically, it helps with all kinds of healing. It helps the course of MS, cancer, fibromyalgia, pain management. It improves the immune system. It even works with addictions and helps um, addicted persons to not act out as much when, they're, when they practice gratitude. Mentally and emotionally, it decreases the effects of depression, stress reaction, suicidal ideation even if someone practices gratitude. It improves resilience, academics, sense of well-being, healing, protection against developing illnesses, and all of this through activating the prefrontal cortex. So, as I have said before, I love it when science catches up with scripture. God already told us to do this because it was gonna do all these things for us. He maybe didn't outline them specifically, but he certainly talked about our health and healing. And when the prefrontal cortex is activated, we can think better, we can make better choices, we can plan. Um, and the thing about practicing gratitude, there's a study that shows that if you do a single action of gratitude where you write a letter of thanks to someone, it actually has lasting neural effects in your brain, in your frontal lobe, prefrontal lobe, and um, frontal lobe, prefrontal cortex. <laughs> it has lasting effects up to three months from writing one letter. Is that amazing? 
parents can impact the well-being of their children by practicing gratitude with their children, but they need to do it with no strings attached. If you do it with a sense of indebtedness, you lose the positive effects of gratitude. Kids and adolescents that are at risk that have um, adverse childhood events can diminish the impact of, listen to this, ineffective parenting styles and decrease suicidal ideation by practicing gratitude. If one partner in a relationship is low in gratitude, it will affect the other partner. But if the other partner is high in gratitude and practices it faithfully, can actually help to mitigate the effects of insecure attachments. But the thing about gratitude also that studies are showing is that you need to express it, not just feel it. It needs to be expressed so that you hear it and so that others hear it. So when do we need to be gra grateful? First of all, of course, is when you feel like it. When you're feeling happy and rejoicing and feeling thankful. That's the easy time to do it, right? But also, when you don't, when you're stressed and sad and worried or disappointed, uncertain, wounded, afraid, angry, this is when we have an opportunity to practice the sacrifice of praise that's mentioned in Hebrews 13, 15. It says, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. It's Jesus' power in us that enables us to praise when we don't feel like it, to sacrifice, a sacrifice when we don't feel like doing something, but because we know that God invites us to, and that Jesus' power is going to enable that, that's how we do that. And Hebrews 13, 16 goes on to say, And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Listen to this quote from John of Avila. One act of thanksgiving when things go wrong with us is worth a thousand thanks when things are agreeable to our inclinations. We want to practice gratitude to God, to others, get connected with others. In every situation, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, give thanks in all circumstances. And then after we receive, respond, and give thanks, step four is glory. Re recognize, remember, and rejoice in the glory. There are at least 359 verses in the Bible that talk about glory to God. John 1.14 says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. We want to sing to God. We want to speak, proclaim, praise. The heavens, the sun, the moon, and the stars all proclaim God's glory. The whole earth is full of his glory. Mountains, forests, trees. But also, there's eternal glory for us. And it begins now as we're transformed. John 17, 22 said this, Jesus says this, I have given them, the disciples, the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are. The disciples were still sinful human beings, weren't they? But they were being transformed and they were being given glory from God. 2 Corinthians 4, 17, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. 2 Corinthians 3, 18, and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord. Isn't that cool? As we are transformed into his image, we are are being exposed to ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord. Isaiah talks about what it's going to be like in heaven. Isaiah 60, 19. No longer will you have the sun for light by day, nor for brightness. Will the moon give you light, but you will have the Lord for an everlasting light, and for your God, and your God for your glory. 
Isaiah 62, 2 says, the nations will see your righteousness. This is talking about us, those who are saved and in heaven. And all kings, your glory. And you will be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will designate. So I want to just real quickly share another story. This is from Carlin, actually, and she gave me permission to share that it was from her. She has been practicing gratitude for quite a few years, even through some really challenging situations. And she shared with me Philippians 4, 11 to 13, which says, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. That's like her rock. That's what she um, leans on and reads and meditates and prays over. She also shared with me Malachi 3, 10, and 11, which is about being faithful in tithe and that God will pour out blessings so that you can't even receive them. They're so great. And that those who are um, causing trouble, verse 11 says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. So Carlin shared that she had a fantastic job from 2000 two, I think it was, until 2014. She said it was the best job she'd ever had. And so she was doing well, and she decided in, in uh, 2014 that she would buy a second home because she was doing well. So escrow closed. Ten days later, she lost her job, completely unexpectedly. Thankfully, she said the realtor, when she said that, I thought, oh, the realtor resold it. But she said, no, the realtor was able to find a management company and a renter, and it has been rented ever since. At, at the same time that all this was happening, she needed sold, shoulder surgery. And it was just about to be scheduled, and then she lost her job, and she's like, oh, I don't know how I can do this. And Coincidentally, as she puts it, Kurt Logan from church called her, and he is an expert in insurance. He knew how to help her get connected to disability insurance. And even though the surgery was huge, her injury was bad, she recovered very well from that. But then 2015 was filled with loss for her. She lost her precious brother, Clayton, her grandmother, three friends, and two cats. She also knew that disability insurance would end in December of that year, but she got an, a job offer by Gilbert Nye, helped her to get by for a whole year before this, the business was sold. And then it took Carlin until February of 2017 to find another job, and she found one, but it was very, very low paying. But... She was thanking God every day and so grateful that she had a renter in her home and that the rental income was actually twice as much as her mortgage. It was helping her to get by. She said, for three years, I prayed for strength and a great attitude, no matter what they said or did to me, to meet the day's challenges, while daily applying for multiple jobs. In late 2019, one of her resumes made it to a recru recruiter who called her about a job offer that was too incredible to believe. It took months more and a mountain of prayers before Carlin finally got to start this new position, just weeks before the pandemic hit. And as far as she knows, her position is very secure. She even got a raise a few weeks ago. She ended her note by telling me, for the most part, I have daily trials in my life but I have always had a multitude of blessings. Isn't that true? We aren't told that we won't have troubles, but we are told that God will meet all our needs and that he will be with us in our troubles. Ellen White says, the soul that responds to the grace of God will be like a watered garden. His health shall spring forth speedily. His light shall rise in obscurity, and the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon him. 
Receive grace. Respond to God. Give thanks. Rejoice in the glory. Lucado ends it this way by saying, God sees in you a masterpiece about to happen. Let's pray. Father, I pray that each one of us would be willing to become a masterpiece by your power, by your grace, by your gift. And all we do is say, yes, please, Lord, take my heart, take my mind, transform me, create me, recreate me into your likeness so that your glory can shine brighter and brighter through me. May we let our light shine as you invite, it, shine as you invite us to. And we just thank you for your amazing grace that is beyond all that we could ask or imagine. Thank you, Lord. Amen. talked about our staff talked about having service sabbath morning but it was going to be in the 40s like the high 40s at nine o'clock in the morning we thought he'd spare you from that i hope that you're warm where you are not just bodily but i hope that your heart is warm because of the message that you have um, been blessed from god's word today i want to say thank you vicky for uh painting a picture for us of grace and gratitude and glory uh, it's a beautiful thing. I asked her to talk about gratitude and, and that she found that connection between um, grace and how grace actually produces gratitude. So it's like everything comes from God. Every good thing comes from God. And I'm just so thankful for that message that we received today. And I hope that we'll all take it to heart and we'll just sp spend this Sabbath and the week to come and the weeks and the months to come and the years to come with hearts overflowing with gratitude to our good God to that day when we will see him in glory and we will be like him for we will see him as he is 
I want to invite you right there where you are as we close this service to uh, say the Mizpah with me and uh, may God just bless you in a rich way. I hope that your family has a wonderful Thanksgiving, however many people that may be, and I won't tell, but I hope that, I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving with your family and friends if you're able to get together with them. Let's say the Mizpah together, shall we? May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. Amen. Go with God.